But uh, the new international version, as I understand it, was a reaction in part to the mm. um, revised standard version and the decision, among other issues, around the, um, how to translate Parthenos. Um, or um, Parthenos. I, I believe so. I mean, I believe so. <laughs> okay. You know, virgin, okay. the word is virgin. And um, as you know, in Hebrew, the word is alama. And so, um, you know, he shall send a virgin in the is the tradition and um the the uh, hebrew counterpart in that rsv is translated as young woman and that was considered um terrible and a scandal okay wait, 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 wait. Now, hold on hold on a second. let's get into that <laughs> i was going to get into that later but let's get into it now because it's going to get to you know why you need translation so but i mean okay so you're talking about a passage in the book of isaiah so in isaiah yes, exactly. 7 that exactly. is uh important always important around uh around christmas time because uh a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and that's yes. how it's quote, quoted and I, I in the king james version i don't remember the Exact question, but Isaiah seven fourteen says something uh, that a uh, let's see a, a a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and uh, you shall call his name Emmanuel. Uh, something, right. like that. and the and the 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 revised standard version in uh, nineteen fifty two translated yeah. Isaiah as a young woman. Yes, uh, shall conceive. And I, re- my grandfather went nuts when that came out. Oh, really? <laughs> he, oh my God! Yeah, he was a Pentecostal Christian. He's like, oh my God, they have, they have taken the virgin birth out of the Bible. And uh-huh. uh, but then, but see, it's quoted, and people, many people on this will know, it's quoted in the New Testament as well. Yes, uh, and it seems it's quoted with this word Parthenos, meaning virgin. Virgin, but, right? But so. Uh, right. And so people got kind of upset because now you either tra- if you translate it as virgin in uh, in the Hebrew Bible, it's not an accurate translation. But if you don't translate it as virgin, then it sounds like uh, Matthew's not really quoting the Bible correctly. <laughs> right? Exactly. So you're getting, exactly. Right? OK, so you, so the NIV, the New International Version, was partly done in order to kind of correct that kind of. That kind of change. Exactly. That uh, it's my understanding. I yes. mean, I was on that committee, but my understanding from reading some of the his- historiography around it, that that was why. And as as you probably know, the um, Revised Standard Version was, was received by Truman, President Truman, on the steps of um, the oh. Capitol building. I think the Capitol building, okay. um, if that's right. And so there was a big hoopla about it. And, and the American participation in that translation was really important. And, you know, the, the sort of arrival of American New Testament scholars in the post-war period, I think symbolized by that translation as well as other work on the Greek New Testament that scholars were doing in the United States at that time and really contributing to um, New Testament scholarship in a different way in the post-war period. And then everybody, or not everybody, people like your grandfather, uh, were not happy with those decisions. And and they were actually book burning. So the Revised Standard Version was burned um, in some contexts. Um, so there, I mean, people care. There's a lot at stake in terms of how different words are translated and the kinds of investments people have in certain um, theological and doctrinal concerns. And so when the Bible changes, it can be shocking for people, especially if they're not trained in the Greek and the Hebrew. And most people aren't like who has time. <laughs> so like most people just read it in English. And why would they have yeah, yeah, yeah. to, you know, read the Hebrew and the Greek? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 